Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I thought we'd go for a walk with some paint on a canvas board and I'd like to show you where we're headed. Now you can see here, for example, we've got a beautiful background using fresco paints and then I've superimposed our lovely Clarity Geese on top. So the best thing to do is to just get started and I'm going to use, I'm using here a, a six by six square canvas board of ours and I'm going to use the um, Paper Artsy Fresco paints directly onto the canvas board and then with a brayer, this is such an easy way to just spread the colour evenly and thinly, just spread it out with the brayer like so. And we're going to just add different colours as we go along and I'll use a piece of copy paper as well, just to get rid of the excess paint on my brayer, that way it will dry faster. And then I'll use a heat gun just to speed dry the background. And we can do this between each layer. Okay, so once this is dry, then we can go to the next layer and the brayer for example, doesn't need washing all the time. So the next thing I want to do is the sky. Now this time, let's use some china and I want to show you how we're going to build up the sky. Again, I'm going to go straight to the canvas and then I'm going to use my brayer to just spread that colour across the sky. Now this is what we call an opaque paint. So in other words, you can't see through it. So I'm just going to put a nice blue sky down. Now if I don't press hard, you see how you can see the texture of the canvas coming through and that's what I'm after. So I'm walking the brayer now backwards and forwards and I can also come in that way, you see from the side a little bit, just to add a little bit of interest on the side. Then what I'll do is, again, I'll take my my copy paper, just dry it off and if you check out what I'm doing you can see exactly how we're just building up that colour over here. Once again this needs to be dry. Okay so the next colour I think I'll use, let's do the one in the bottom now and I'd like to go this time with um, South Pacific. Let's try a South Pacific and we've got choices. I want to go a bit easier because I'm using a darker colour now and I'm going to go straight, not straight to the canvas. This time I'll use the, the craft mat and I'm going to go lightly. So I'm walking the brow. This is a translucent colour and you'll see that as I add this colour to the base of our artwork, you can see that it's not as thick. It's, it's, it's got more translucency to it which is great. So we'll just build up that just lightly. See the lovely thing about acrylic paint is if you don't like it you can just go let it dry go back over it. But you can see how easily and quickly we're building up our, our background. Let's check it out again. You see already you can see what I'm doing here. I'm leaving some lightness in the middle and I'm just applying some paint around the outside. Now as far as the depth goes that's just a question of picking up colour and dropping it off one colour after another. So I'll dry this and then I'll just add a couple more layers. So a couple more layers, let's see. I think we'll go with something really bright now, like, um, let's have a look, I've got, the haystack is lovely, that's an opaque one. So let's just mix up haystack here, a little bit of haystack now with, um, with the South Pacific. And we'll just run some of that lovely, see it mutes it a bit, just run some of that lovely yellow through the middle and that will give it some depth, okay. So what I'll do now is I'll just add a few more layers. You talk among yourselves and listen to some nice music and I'll just build up these colours one at a time. And you'll see I'll go light, I'll go dark. I'll just build it up. It will take me about 10 minutes if I'm going to do it properly. So you listen to some music while I carry on.
Okay. Right, I think that'll do. It's got a nice dark base and uh, we can always l add lightness afterwards. See, and the thing about the chalk paint is, what I love about it is, it, it, when it's dry, it's so easy to get rid. So let's check out what we're, where we're going again. Let's have a look. Right now it's time to, do the, uh, to, to sort the geese out. So I'm gonna pop that to one side and, uh, and let's have a look at the stamps. So I've got a pair of geese and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp them onto a piece of tissue paper. Um, and I've got three layers of tissue paper here and I'm using a black archival ink pad. So I'm just gonna add the permanent ink pad. And what I will do is add a piece of copy paper underneath because tissue paper is so thin that it will go through at least three layers and then the deck as well. So if I'm using a permanent ink pad, I wanna get it right. So now I'm just going to stamp this into place. Again, this needs to be dry before I do anything or it will smear. So I've stamped my geese and then once again, I'll put the lid on there and then I'm going to just speed dry. All right, so now we've speed dried the geese and you can see it comes through several layers. And now I'm gonna flip it over and on the back where there's no ink, I'm going to color the, these, uh, these lovely birds in. And so I'm gonna use um, Spectrum Noirs, Polychromos, Faber-Castell, just some really nice coloring pencils. And, and so, you know, what color are geese? They're greys and browns. So I'm just going to, working from behind now, I'm just going to add some color to the geese. Um, so again, go and put the kettle on, won't take me long. I'm just gently gonna build up the depth here, color on color, until I'm happy with the look. And always, working from behind. So you see, we're, we're colouring in from behind on the tissue paper. So when I flick over, you will have noticed that I was going right across the lines. But of course, when I flick over, um, the, uh, the line art is actually on the other side. So a couple more tricks. We've done the colouring in. Now the next thing we want to do is how do we get the birds onto the canvas? Next good point. Okay, so this time what we want to do is turn over one more time so we're actually still working on the back. And this time I'll take some white paint, Snowflake. I'll stand up for this one so I want to do it gently and carefully. And I want to take my brayer again, which is dry, so it doesn't matter. If it looks blue, it doesn't matter, it won't come out blue. Well, I hope not. So, and then what we want to do now is take some white opaque snowflake paint, there we go. And we're just gonna add this now to the brayer. So we'll just roll the brayer through the white paint and then we're gonna add the paint to the back. So we've colored the birds in and now we're adding the paint to the back. You have to go gently with tissue. Uh, see, if you, don't, if, you, if you muck about or you go backwards and forwards, it will start to crumple and crinkle. So always go in one direction. Let's add a little tiny bit more. Go in one direction and then just, there we go, let's do his feet. There we are. And his head, their heads. Okay. And when it's dry, you can go back over it again if you want it even whiter. Let's ch turn it over and have a look and you can see how that makes the, the geese really um, vibrant. And of course the color is trapped. So once more, I'm going to speed dry this. And then we can have a look and we can see that it's absolutely fine. This is working really well. So 
Now, how do we get this to there? We've got choices. And we could, for example, cut out the bird now and then uh, with Mod Podge or with the, with the glue PVA, we could attach the birds that way. That's how traditionally, that's how purists or, or uh, mixed media artists would work. So I thought, let's see if we can do it more simply than that. Um, because the Mod Podge isn't the easiest thing in the world to use. And I'll tell you something, have a look here. You'll notice that my geese, if you can see, they haven't got any legs. They, they lo well, they've got the legs, they lost the feet. And that was because when I was using the Mod Podge, it came off. So I'm not, I wasn't too, none too pleased with that one. So instead of that, let's try something different. I want to take some double-sided tape and I'm just gonna lift off the thick side like so. And then I'm going to deposit my, my geese on the double-sided tape. So just bear with me while I lay these down. Right, so now they're stuck. They are definitely stuck on double-sided tape. And I've, I'm only using that much. I don't need to waste that other piece. And then what I'll do is let me just cut this off so that then I've got something to work with. Okay, so now I've attached my geese to double-sided tape. Now this is gonna make it, firstly, much, much easier to cut out, and secondly, much, much easier to attach. So I'm gonna get my lovely expensive scissors made in Germany out, and, uh, and again, we'll listen to some nice music while I cut my geese out. Lovely. So don't they look super? And if we take our, our canvas, we can see exactly where we're going to place them too. So we've got the dark area there and we're gonna place them there. Now, what I'm going to do, if we have a look at mine, the, the original, let's check out the, um, the geese in flight because I don't wanna have to do that twice. So let's check this out. I'd rather repeat that than repeat that cutout job. So now let's just add the geese into the sky. Their friends are in flight, you see. So we'll just add them, and then I'll show you how I did the flowers in the, in the meadow as well. I actually did it to hide the fact that they'd lost their feet, but that's only for you and me to know. Right, so we're gonna add the, f the geese in flight with a black archival ink, let it soak in, and we're adding it directly to the canvas. That's perfect. Okay, so we've got those in place. And then the next thing we want to do, once we've done that, is um, add the geese. So I'm just gonna peel away the uh, paper on the back. That's probably the hardest part of the whole deal. Let's just get that going. Right. And then we'll just gently peel away without ripping the head off or the feet, doing my party piece again. Just slowly, slowly peel away the adhesive off the back like this. Oh, no pressure, Barbara. Mind his feet. Okie dokie. Uh, right, and then we're gonna decide where they're going to stand. There we are. And then we'll lay them down until we're happy with the position. Let me just get up now and have a look. I think that's absolutely perfect. And then we'll just lay them down gently, like so. And they now are firmly attached and beautiful. There you go. And to my mind, using double-sided tape is much, much better. And the reason is because now, if I wanted to add some shadow or some shade, there's no Mod Podge, which is like a sealant on the top. You see, it's all paper. So now, if I wanted to add some shadow around the bottom, for example, I'm not having to deal with a sealant, which then won't allow me to take the pencil to the, um, to the acrylic, you see. So this way, just by now, I can add a three-dimensional aspect. You see what I'm doing? So 
I'm just going to do this. Bear with me and you'll see exactly why I feel it's really good to use adhesive. You see how it's popping out now? Let's take a dark grey pencil. Right, and we're just going to add the depth here and I can work beautifully on the canvas. So, now the very last thing I want to do, let's take another look. I want to show you how to do the flowers. These are a piece of cake. Uh, they are literally a walk in the park. And what we're going to do, for example, is take, let's take um, a red, and we're just going to add a little tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of paint on the, on the deck, like so. And then I'm just going to start building up my flowers and I'm using my groovy plate tools, you see, because I can pick them up and I can drop them off. I pick it up and drop it off. And this way I can add, with that end, the smaller end, obviously the flowers are smaller, dotted, so they're in the distance. And then with the larger tool, for example, obviously the flowers are going to be bigger. So again, just build up your colour. I'm going to do a whole meadow, a poppy field. That's what this is going to be. And it's going to be full of beautiful red flowers. So give me two minutes and I'll sort my poppy field out. Okay, let's have a look then. So you can see that we've got a beautiful abstract poppy field now, which I rather like. And I'm just gonna let that dry now. Um, that will take about five minutes. That'll do. It's not quite dry, so I'll go very carefully now. But if you look at a poppy, it's usually got a little black dot in the middle, hasn't it? The inner. And so let's see if I take my, my black paint, my little black dress, and I'm just going to add a little bit of black to each of the poppies. When they're not quite dry, I'm just going very carefully, but I'm impatient. That's one of my defects of character. So I'm just going to do this and we can listen to some music again. Okay, so let's check it out. We've got a poppy field. Let's have a look from here. You can see I've chosen in the original one, I did spring flowers, but in this one, I've done poppies. Now, this one looks nice because it's mounted on a larger whiteboard. And so all I wanted to show you is exactly how to do that. If, for example, I take a larger whiteboard like so, and then normally I would attach the car, this double-sided tape again to the back. But since my poppies aren't quite dry yet, I'm attaching it rather than to the back of the artwork, I'm attaching it to the actual larger canvas. You see, and then this I'm going to place down slowly onto the board and then make sure it's straight before I press into the center. And the minute I press in the center, that my friends, is not going anywhere.
So that in essence, if I give you my, my little stand to display it, you see that in essence is exactly how we arrived at this. So it's not half as hard as you think it is. I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoy my projects, then do pop along to my blog. I blog every day, many step-by-steps, and it's barbaragrayblog.blogspot.com. Or pop along to our website and have a look at our beautiful stamps and stencils and our groovy system. And, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>